Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. When you know it's the animal you want to take, don't wait around. No. Because there could be things happening. He could chase that sow off and they could just be gone again. As soon as I hit send on that text message, I saw that chocolate bear coming in and I was like, oh. And then I text you, bear. And then you're like, what, what? (laughs) What's happening? So we have two bears that are giant. One of them's over 400 pounds. The one is just giant. everybody welcome to idaho and bear camp with yogi and i yeah it's been fun we've spent 17 days hunting bears yeah total something like that roughly it's been uh quite the journey we're having our morning coffee we're literally camping up to leave today i haven't showered in four days yogi has but i'm like more of a pig than you are and uh, <laughs> we've had a heck of a trip. We're just missing Rocky now. Yeah, that's it. Unfortunately, he's, or fortunately for him, he's in Hawaii hunting access to Yeah, lucky, lucky him. Guy. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not complaining because we've had a great, great week here. Yeah, it's been awesome. It's like going to yeah. be 105 degrees today. Mm-hmm. It's been pretty crazy because we started out bear season. We went in April. Yep. It April? Yeah. Yeah. Um, to eastern Idaho and literally got snowed out. Like, Yeah, it was cold. Yeah. And there was no bears to be seen anywhere. No. It was supposed to be 60 degrees and beautiful weather. And we woke up in a tent and it was 23. And we hiked up to the top of this ridge to do some glassing. And um, there was so much snow still. It was crazy. And it was literally like polar ice caps just like freezing over your face and it's windy 40 30 40 mile an hour winds yeah you couldn't even hold your binos steady it was it was not fun it was not spring bear hunting weather no it, this is what <laughs> spring bear hunting is supposed to be like you sit around camp and you drink your coffee yeah. in the morning and there's bugs and life is good and it's yeah. comfortable and nice mm-hmm. and so i just looked at yogi and i was like i don't want i don't want to be miserable let's no. get out of here yeah we're staying in a tent too and it was cold yeah, it just wasn't nice. Like no. everything was frozen, mm-hmm. and which is why the bears weren't out yet. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. We have a friend up there running baits, and he's like, um, "I don't even have bears like hitting my baits. Like, what? You guys might want to come back mm-hmm. <laughs> another time." So yeah. So then we came back here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, in beginning of June. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, even then, we had bad luck with the weather, though. We, like, we got rained on. We got snowed on. It was cold for June. Yeah. Well, the first night in the stand, it was so cold. I was absolutely not really prepared for it because mm. it was supposed to be... It was 80 degrees in town, and I brought warm clothes, but not for snow. I mean, I did, but... yeah. Not for sitting. Sitting in a stand. Like, there's nothing that's colder than sitting in a stand. It doesn't matter what you wear, what you bring. You need to bring twice what you think you're going to need because you're not moving for right. so Well, and the hours. other thing is we're using these climber stands in some of these locations. And you get all sweaty when you climb in the tree wearing all these layers. And then you're sitting up there and you just sit for hours and it gets cold and cold and it, you know, rains on you and you just get cold. Yeah, and Rocky, he's kind of known for, Rocky Jacobson, I should say, is who we're up here hunting with also. Um, He's known for, like, putting these stands at, like, 20 to 25 feet in the air because his theory is if you get them high enough, (laughs) it doesn't matter what direction the wind blows, the bears can't smell you, which I don't necessarily agree with, but your nose is, like, you're climbing. Your nose is virtually I bleeding. I think my stand the first night was like between 30 and 40 feet. <laughs> yeah, that might be an exaggeration. But. And that was my first time ever using a climber stand. You took for 
ever. Yeah. Well, to go I've never done tree. it before. It was like, what is this thing? You know, can I trust these wires? Is this thing gonna, you know, slide down the tree with me? Whatever. It's like, well, just be cautious about it, I guess. And it was getting because I had I was sitting above you, still behind you, you know, to yeah. video. Yeah, that was the highest we've been in a stand though. In, on this trip well the 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 thing is with those stands is is the terrain you know we're on these big it's 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 idaho it's mountain country it's really steep ground so <laughs> when the bait is a little uphill from you your stand has to be even that much higher to offset mm-hmm. the angle yeah like, like so you're not looking flat at the bears you know, to get flat with the bears, you know, you have to go 10 feet up to be at their eye level. And then, you know, you got to climb another 15, 20 feet right. past that. So it's yeah. their high stands that you were climbing and I could tell you were nervous. I've done a climber before, but it doesn't matter. I don't really like climbing in and out of tree stands. They always make me nervous. I'm like safety harness Sally. Like I'll, if it's super sketchy, whitetail season, I'll even attach my, my cl- climber cord to the ladders Hmm. because um like i get stressed out like especially if i'm wearing like 500 pounds of clothes yeah well this was the first time i I used one you know so i mean now i'm not worried about it no i'm you know i'm jumping between stands and i which i will not do and um climbing the trees and those and it's it's not a problem you just have to get used to it you know, that was the first time I used one, so I was like, oh, okay. Well. Yeah, but you liked it so much you went and bought one. I'm like, I'm going to take this to Sweden. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to put this in my suitcase and take one home. Yeah, I'm going to take one to Europe because uh, you, you don't have this stuff in Europe. People don't use this because most of the the hunting areas, and like especially in Sweden, is it's private private, gra- uh, private ground or it's uh, government land but uh, a privately owned hunting lease. <clears throat> so people put permanent stands up. Because they don't have to do this uh, public land hunting, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but I want to take one. Oh, I've bought one. I'm going to take it over, so I can um, I can climb some of the trees up there in, in different spots where we don't have permanent stands, and then especially for scouting, you know, I want to sit up there with a camera and a spotting scope and get some different angles on on some of the robux and stuff in the fields, which is it's going to be sweet, I think. Yeah, the the climbers, they do take a minute to get used to, but they offer you a lot of freedom mm. where you can move around based on the change in the wind or, mm-hmm. you know, if, you know, like for whitetail, I, I don't, there's not a lot of, I don't know, I haven't been whitetail hunting where people use a lot of climbers, but man, they are so fast. So if, you know, you figure out, well, this whitetail buck is using this trail that's, you know, you've got to fit, move 50 yards to get that shot. Those climbers are so fast. Um, yeah. I think that we should try to look into maybe even bringing those this year for some of our whitetail hunts. Or, um, sometimes the trees don't work for it. Some of them will get pretty big. But mm-hmm. if it's in, in a spot that we could use a climber, it would be, gosh, it would be so much faster and easier for yeah. us both to... Just say, hey, you know, we need to move over 50 yards. And that's what I did last year. You know, I had to move uh, my stands. Heck, we, you know, we were in one little drainage. We moved three times trying to get in the right spot where we had the wind mm. and the proximity to where, you know, this buck was cruising. Yeah. And, and then I, you know, I missed it because that happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, a lot of people want to sit in a stand and be like, no, this is my stand. Mm-hmm. This is where I have to be. And that's just not reality. Well, you know, sometimes you have to move around. Bow hunting, it's obviously because you don't want to be so close, you know, and you can yeah. move around with those stands a lot easier. You'd be more flexible. It depends on the trees, though. You know, these trees up here, they have a lot of limbs. So you have to find the right ones to climb because otherwise you'd do, be doing a lot of limbing yeah, on the way it's up. Okay, you take your little saw. Um, but I mean, like for me, when I take this one to Sweden now, there's we have a lot of um, birch trees. They don't have any limbs until you get way up high. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be easy to find spots where I can climb. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if I can actually put it to use over there. This is your first year bow hunting. Yes. The wife introduced the husband to yes. bow hunting. She did. Yay. It's been fun, and I you I had your it. butt kicked though. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had uh, uh, lady luck on my side on these bow hunts, uh, but that's how it is, you know, hunting. And I mean, especially on this trip, I've passed on a few bears, 
that I didn't want to shoot because to me they didn't look mature enough. So, but I mean it's you know it's been interesting to to get into bow hunting um to be doing all the practicing with the bow and I enjoy shooting the bow at the targets and yesterday we we shot at to 70 yards. Yeah. I was good all the way to 60 with my bow, you know. And then at 70 it started spreading out a little bit and I was shooting low and I didn't want to you know cuz when I move one of my side pins I will have to move all of them and reconfirm all the ones mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that right right now. So I I'm not going to shoot an animal that far anyway if yeah. I don't have to. So um uh yeah, I feel pretty good shooting out to 60 yards and that's that's pretty exciting, you know. That's it's only been like a couple of months since I started. Yeah, literally pra practicing with the bow. So, yeah, no, it's it's been fun and just not, you know, I, I just haven't had the luck with me to be able to uh, to actually shoot an animal with a bow, but uh fingers crossed it'll happen here next couple of weeks. So we're in Idaho hunting is public land. There is people running baits here. There's hound hunters here. Um, but it's pretty crazy where we're hunting right now. We haven't seen any other hunters. Well, we saw one houndsman cruise through yep. with a rig dog one day. Mm -hmm. um, but apart from that, we've not seen other hunters. No other bear baiters. No. Um, we've literally had this place kind of to ourselves, so it's been super awesome. But regardless of that, the bears are really flipping smart, like super keen. Like those big bears, we you spotted that one big bear. So we have two bears that are giant. One of them's over 400 pounds. One of them's in that 350 to 400 pound range. It's not as big as the other one. The one is just giant. Mm -hmm. um, that one has never been to the bait during the day. And the other one that's in that 350 to 400 type range. That one's been to the bait during the day and you saw it. Mm -hmm. We came in one day. I was sitting above you in the in the stand behind you and um I could see out through the like the the trees <coughs> out to our left. And I was just I was looking. I was like is this a because it was in an old burn. I was like is that an, like a burnt stump that I haven't picked up on yet or what is it? And then I saw it moving. I was like okay, yeah, there's a burn I told you, but you couldn't see it. Mm -mm, I couldn't see and it. And I video I got right some next to me. Yeah, I got some video of it right through the trees there. That thing is, there was a big, there was a big bear, big head on it, you know, wide skull, and um, just massive body, little white patch on it. Came in downwind, of course, and yeah. it's like he was sitting there sniffing, and then he just turned and walked off. He was like, yeah. "There's something not right about this," so and he just left. And that's why these big ones are so yeah. hard to get, and a lot of people. They're like, oh, you're you're baiting bears. That's cheating. It's so easy. And yeah. baiting bears is, from a conservation standpoint, predator management standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, sure, you could, you know, there's lots of bears we could have notched our tags mm -hmm. on. Um, mm -hmm. There's bugs everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're coming. The last couple of days when it's so warm, the bugs have been out. And it's 730 in the morning right now, and the bugs are already bad. You wait by mm -hmm. this afternoon. It's going to be crazy. But... Um, but the great thing about hunting bait is you have the opportunity to really get a good look at these bears. Every mm -hmm. bear we've seen has been a legal bear. Um, we've not had any family units come into the bait. But, I, you know, I don't want to take a two- or three-year-old bear. I want to take a six- to eight-year-old bear. And, you know, we've had that opportunity to really get a look at these mm -hmm. animals. And, you know, those younger bears, they're, they do come in easier and, mm -hmm. and you know— um, they're just not as keen to the situation and it is really tough to get the bigger ones. Yeah. Plus they move a lot, you know, I mean, this is, like you said, this mountainous terrain and deep drainage is lots of timber. And I mean, it, you would have to spend two months straight up here every day with numerous baits, you know, and check everything, check your cameras every day to be able to pattern exactly what these bears do for movement. But, <coughs> I mean, <coughs> those big ones, they've they have been on camera every now and then, but it's not like we've been able to pattern them no. consistently, you know, because they, they have a big area range. that they, uh, a big range that they um, mm -hmm. uh, that they frequent, and 
also with the with the breeding season, you know, falling into this time of year, they they do move around and they're not that easy to pet. And if they find a, a hot sow somewhere, they'll be over there for a couple of weeks. You know, it's not like they're gonna be at the bait just because there's fresh fresh bait there. No, they don't. So, they're not driven quite like that. Yeah. And it's interesting. Even the young ones, they'll come in, they'll spend fifteen, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, and they leave. Yeah. They don't just sit necessarily and eat. Yeah. And eat, neat, neat, neat. They kind of move along, and then a different barrel come in. Or, um, but I got very lucky. You know, this on our third trip, first night out, um, we've been splitting up. So I was self filming, you were self filming, and um, we rebated the bait together. And then uh, I pulled the camera card, and I climbed the stand, and you you left, and went to your bait, and I was looking through the trail camera pictures and um, the bear I end up shooting uh, it was a nice chocolate boar and he was coming in with a black sow and had been coming in during the day but also that that like 350 pounder that we'd seen with the white patch had been coming in had came in once at least during mm -hmm. the day and so I was like man um, there's three good bears that had been in during the day while we were gone mm -hmm. And uh, a storm started rolling in, and weather started to change. And you literally text me. You're like, have you seen anything? I'm like, nada. As soon as I hit send on that text message, I I saw that that, that chocolate bear coming in, and I was like, oh. And then I text you, bear. And then you're like, what? What? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, because I think your message read something like, I asked you, have you seen anything? And you said, nope. And then that was like a message. And then the next message was, bear and something. And I I wasn't sure if I should read it as no bear or if I should say if it if it was meant to say nope and then bear, you know. So I was like, what's she saying? And I was asking you what's going on and then the next one was yeah, I shot one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it literally happened in 3 minutes. Yeah. So from the time I texted him, nope, <laughs> I haven't seen a bear to responding bear. Uh and and the nice thing about having the pictures of that bear as soon as I saw well, it's the only chocolate bear we've seen on that we've had pictures of. No, we've seen a sow with uh, with yearling cubs. She was brownish, not as brown as that one. Yeah, though. but that was on a different bait. Yeah. Um, but this is the only other, I should say, the only legal mm -hmm. uh, color phase bear that we've seen. And I knew he was, you know, good size bear. As uh, soon as I saw the color, I was like, mm -hmm. game on. Here we go. Yeah. Um, and it was actually pretty early when he came in it was only 7 30 mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing like like we were talking about earlier you're not able to pattern these bears no. consistently up here because they move around like that but the that's obviously you know doesn't make it easier mm -mm. but then on the other hand because of their infrequent movement patterns and it could be any bear coming into the yeah. bait. You know, you don't know. There could be a totally different one coming in yeah. that just cruised along this range and smelled something and come down to the bait that we've never seen before. Yeah. So that's the that's the beauty of it too. You know, you're sitting there every day. Something could happen. Yeah. I always feel so. like if you have a bear, like that one had been in during the day for the two or three days prior to us sitting, mm -hmm. that bear had some confidence in that bait in the daylight. Mm -hmm. it, it felt pretty confident. It was a boar, you know, not an old boar, but a mature boar. So I think he's kind of in his prime, probably. He's been fighting. You could face with oh, scarred, scarred up. up yeah. So he's probably a little cocky. Uh, and he came in with confidence. That bear mm -hmm. didn't even look around. He just, once I heard him, like he beelined to the bait. The sow, now she was a little smarter. <laughs> she circled and went around and didn't just run to the bait the way he, I mean, he like literally just beelined yeah well you know he's probably chased her off a few baits before too you know well, she might be a little sketchy yeah, yeah. so yeah. but yeah no that's you know you, you can tell the difference when there's a young one coming in or a mature one that's dominant yeah. you know well those young ones are quite like, oh they've quiet. been sneaking in quiet yeah yeah they they tiptoe and they won't break a branch and even the 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 young ones we were watching this year the first part of the season they were afraid to tip over the barrel, mm -hmm. like terrified of it. If the barrel moved or did anything, they'd run and practically yeah. tree. Yeah. 
Yeah. But now, you know, two, three weeks later. They've been getting used to it more and more. They'll tip. They'll. It's crazy. They'll grab the inside of the barrel and they'll just like, mm-hmm. like curl it over. Yeah, like those arm little. Wrestle. <laughs> you can tell too by the way they flip it over how big they are, how strong they are. Because the little ones they have to put more effort into it. Obviously, yeah. the big ones they just use one claw and it's down. <laughs> yeah, it's there. And yeah. then it's really been fun to watch them roll the barrel a little bit to get the food to come out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've learned the ones that are smarter have learned that. Like yeah. the one you passed on the other night, that thing just rolled the barrel, flipped it over, and then he just rolled it to get the. Yeah, food and to then come he was out. holding it with one paw. You know, up because it's kind of rolling downhill towards him again. He's holding it up so that it wouldn't roll over on top of the food that came out. Yeah. He's holding it up and then eating with the other paw. It was pretty cool to see. But you see the difference. Like there's two, those two little knuckleheads, we call them. They came in together like a young boy and a young sow, like two-year-olds probably. Um, they came in together and the sow, she wasn't as smart as the as the. Well, she was young more boy. timid. She was more timid for herself, but she was also, she was putting her head in the barrel trying to get to the food she stuck it in there like this <laughs> trying to get to the food whereas the boar he would just reach in and pull out a piece uh, of bread and eat it you know so it's interesting to see the different um behaviors yeah it's it's been fun well yeah. i didn't even let mine stick his nose in the nope. barrel because i mean literally the there was a storm coming in the wind was starting to blow so i'm in a tree and it's starting to sway mm-hmm. And I know it's going to start raining, and I'm just assuming at this point that these things aren't going to stick around long once a storm hits. So that thing touched his nose to the bait. Yeah, so, and that's, you know, we've been setting the barrels to where that opening in the barrel is um, twisted. On a, twisted on an angle. Yeah. So if they, where well, the bears will come into the barrel and stick their nose into that opening, that broadside from the, yeah. from the tree stand, which is perfect. And he did that, and you just... That's when you hit him. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, he was he was yeah. quartered away a little bit, which was even better. Um, and uh, the you know the 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 biggest thing I think if if you hesitate on that moment, um, trying to decide what you want to do or if you want to shoot it or if they sneak in on you and you're not ready, and they tip that bait over and they lay down, they can get into a weird position and stay yeah. there, you know, for a long time and you you don't get a shot. So, mm-hmm. I mean, man, I I was ready. I had my bow in my hand and I did not wait. As soon as that thing, you know, was at the right spot, I just, mm-hmm. I mean, literally, I mean, I don't have 30 seconds of video of the bear. Yeah. Because I, I just, I mean, you, you sit for 15 or 18 days. I'm not, I'm not holding back. I'm no. letting it fly. Well, but that, <laughs> that also, also shows your experience, you know, tree stand hunting, bow hunting, that you know you have to do that for that one moment that you have. You might as well use the first chance you get you know when you yeah. know it's the animal you want to take don't wait around no because there could be things happening he could chase that sow off and they could just be gone again you or know? get a tickle of my wind and yeah. not like it and take off yeah. or whatever that's the other thing in this terrain the wind is really hard to pattern too because it's so swirly or we've we've had these baits on like hillsides and on little knobs in the terrain and the wind is swirling so much it's hard to have a consistent wind. Well, we're trying to have them on ridge tops, you know, on the tops of ridges. Yeah. <clears throat> so where you can have some drag, you know, below you yeah. a, or away from you and not, you know, right to the bait. You know, we're not in any bottoms. We're, yeah, you have, have a, a predominant scrolling. wind, obviously, but it's it's still hard, especially with the th- this weather up here. You know, you've got the, the temperatures changing. Uh, you know, it's really warm and then really cold uh, in the evening. It gets colder in the evening, so that makes the winds change too. You know, uh, and then the draws, the steep draws around those knobs in the terrain. So it's not easy to have a consistent wind, mm-hmm. which is why we've been using a lot of scent. Yeah. Uh, a lot of scent products to, uh, you know, to to just um, what's it called to uh, cover to cover our scent, scent up. With you know, so Yogi uh, is German and Swedish, so sometimes he <laughs> gets a little lost in vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get lost in translation. That's what happens to our marriage. That's like, what happens. What did he just say? And then sometimes when I'm annoyed, I just start speaking in a different language. Well, it's when he wants to talk bad about me to his mom. He does it in Swedish, so I don't know. <laughs> All the time. Every day. <laughs> but no, it's been a lot of fun. We're using um. The tink smoking sticks in the stands and on the ground. And mm-hmm. it's interesting because 
the first time we used them, the bear, the younger bear came in and went straight to that smoking stick. Mm-hmm. It was, it yeah, was you pretty were interesting it. to yeah. see. Um, but that, it lets us know a lot, you know, a cover scent, number one, but then also lets us know what wind currents are doing. Yeah, that's why I like using those smoke sticks because you can see the smokes and it, how it changes, you know, so many times mm-hmm. during the during the day when you sit there. Mm-hmm. Now it's pretty handy to have those um, on the ground, but even in the tree with you, you know. We've so. had a lot of people, or Yogi's had a lot of people even uh, message him, you know, what's the key? You're hunting public land, being successful. What's what's the trick? And it's like, <laughs> there's no trick. Well, <laughs> it's like... There's no trick. <laughs> if you, It's like with any hunt. If you're doing, uh, like it's, if it's a do-it-yourself hunt, and you're hunting public land, you have to put time in. Yeah. That's it. You have to commit to it. You have to, f- you know, you have to scout. You have to put time in. You have to be patient. You have to put a lot of effort in. And, uh, you know, that's what people a lot of times don't understand. We've been very fortunate here with with Rocky, you yeah. know, helping us. And he's he's done most of the groundwork with these baits. Well, he's obviously. hunted up here for 20 years. Yeah. And so. luckily for me, you know, we're all good friends and... Um, we were going to go to Eastern Idaho and he's like, look, Christy, I'm going to be in Hawaii hunting deer Mm -hmm. in, you know, I, I just tagged, he tagged a bear like first part of the season. He's like, I'm not, I don't need to use my baits. If you guys want to grab some bait tags and, and come on up here, you're welcome, you know, welcome to come up here and, and hang out. And we did a bunch of, we did a bunch of stuff on his new, um, the bull call series from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls that's coming out this year and filmed a bunch of stuff on that and just got to spend a week in camp. I mean, Rocky's retired now and uh, we actually planned, we're doing an antelope, archery antelope hunt with him in August yeah. now too. And, and I mean, he's been like, he's been such a mentor to me uh, and, and such a good friend. I mean, him and my dad are friends. And so it's been nice just to get to come and hang out in camp and, mm-hmm. And it spent time with him and Rena. Rena yeah. came up, and we picked morel mushrooms. That was super oh, yeah. awesome. The Didn't see any this this time. It's too last, dry now. Last yeah. time we came up, there was so many. Well, it, the snow had just melted, and I think that's key. Yeah. Because you couldn't even get in here until the, after the first week of June. Mm-hmm. It's too much snow. Yeah. Um, and the snow had just melted, and then we had a ton of rain, and those morels just were mm-hmm. popping. We Plus ate you so can, many. We can see now to the change in uh, ground vegetation from last yeah, time we were thick. here. It's it's so much greener, and the ground's just covered. And is dry. Yeah. Like when we were here the first time, the ground was wet, mm. and it's like super dry now. Mm-hmm. Like the morels are they're done. Yeah. But that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, hanging out with her. You you found a deadhead. Yep. And Rocky found a really nice whitetail shed and And I actually found one of Rocky's old arrows. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> like down way down the hill from one of his baits. We were like just walking through there looking for mushrooms and sheds and stuff and I was like, There's an arrow. So I picked it up and I brought it back. He's like, Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it had lost one of the fletchings and that was it. Yeah. And then he was like, Yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So yeah. No, that's it's been a, it's been a good time. It and is a good time. Well, yesterday we were sitting, we didn't see nothing all day. We made the perfect bait. It was so good. I would have, you know, if I was a bear, I would have laid in it. Well, you thought about it anyway. It was a good bait, really good bait. But yesterday, there was nothing going on, nothing. It's really got well. What happened is we're sitting the bait where I shot my bear, and since I shot my bear, those bigger ones haven't been back. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily a direct correlation because rocky took his bear yeah which was a big rocky got a 19 inch bear on a different bait on a different bait <clears throat> and then nick came in literally just a couple days later and he shot a 19 yeah. inch bear off that bait my bear is probably 18 inch bear hmm. but i mean the other we know that there's two bears yeah. in the area that are bigger than my but i bear. don't think that affected anything i mean obviously the sow that was uh the that good size sow that was uh, with, uh, with your mm-hmm. boar that you took she obviously might have been scared off, you know, yeah. after you shot that one. Uh, but but she didn't know really what happened. All she knew, because she didn't see me and she didn't catch my wind. All she knew is that boar walked to the bait. Yeah. And something happened and he, like when I shot him, he growled, yeah. you know, like this crazy sound. And then he kind of ran off and kind of towards her. So maybe she was just thinking he was chasing her. You don't know. But the other thing is she she probably came back and sniffed him when he after he died. 
So I'm assuming that would have scared her off, you know. Who knows? Yeah, it's, um, she never came back. But it's I don't think it had it affected any of the other bears that we've seen on camera. Um, I mean, I, the day after I set that bait when you went uh, to town for that meeting, and um, I, I had those two little knuckleheads come in, you know. So I don't think it. But whether you should believe these things or not, like with the hunt calendar you've been looking at, those were the two days we had almost 100%. Uh, hunting opportunity and then yesterday when we said it was only it was down to 45 mm -hmm. percent so i don't know how much you're going to put you know how much you want to put into that but there was nothing going on yesterday apart from um a tree that fell behind us <laughs> that thing crashed we didn't see it but it was like woof, and it came down and we're like okay well after i shot my bear the other night uh you know we had an hour and a half of daylight left normally you know i would have probably went and recovered it But it was pouring rain. It was pouring and it was lightning thunder and, and lightning. Thunder. Yeah. And it was windy. Just nasty. And I was walking mm -hmm. out through the burn and there literally was a limb. I heard it coming. You know, they call him a widow maker out west here. And my uncle was a timber faller. He got hit in the head with them and has not, I mean, he's been messed up for mm -hmm. life. And I heard one of those things coming down out of the trees and I ran and tried to hide next to something to like break it if it hit me because yeah. like those things are bad and i was like man i gotta get out of here like pronto i did not want to be yeah. in anywhere in that vicinity you know you don't want to yeah. be around that one when, well when and the other thing is over. the other thing is you're you're you know you're battling daylight daylight when you when you're going in after an animal that potentially could be wounded and it's a it's obviously a predator a big big animal that can hurt you if if it's wounded and you you know You, you don't watch it, so you you might as well leave it. It was cool enough at night. You might oh, as yeah. well leave it overnight. And then we, we went the in the next... The was good. Yeah, we went in the next morning early, and we found it like 50 yards from where <laughs> you shot it. Well, so. I literally <laughs> heard it go down not 20 seconds after I shot mm. it. It was such a fast But it ran over, it, over the hill and then down, and then you must have heard it just crash into that log where yeah. it was laying when we found it. Yeah. But you don't know, you know. Y it could have been it crashing off down the hill too, mm -hmm. running away. So, And then you don't know what the terrain looks like down there. It's pretty thick in some of those places. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, and I w certainly wasn't going in by myself yeah. uh, to do that. So, yeah, we came back, and, and the, the meat um, is pretty funny because um, Rick from First Hunt Foundation, he hunts up here, and he's got a great foundation, and he's doing a a luau with his church and so he's gonna serve some of the bear meat at the luau uh, mm -hmm. which will be super fun for people i think yep. um to get to experience that so i gave him both back straps and i gave him a hind quarter and he's gonna take that and awesome yeah serve it up for the luau yeah have them uh, have them try that that's good pagan bear yeah and all in one yeah that's perfect that's good yeah no so that's obviously pretty sweet that he uh He uses the bear meat for stuff like that, um, yeah. and that you can, you can show people that, even though you're predator hunting, uh, predator management, uh, some of the predator meat you can use for human consumption. You know, black bear meat's fine to yeah. use, um, and uh, we're I taking the rest. Of, we're taking the other three quarters home, and yeah, and uh, we'll make that into sausages or yeah. whatever. But uh, it's beautiful meat. Yeah, no, it's the good. The hind quarters had literally like oh, yeah. three inches of fat. <laughs> it was crazy yeah. how much fat was on. And the that's hind now in June, and all they do is eat every day until they go and den up in October. Yeah. And I imagine how much fat they have then. Well, like a pig, if you're growing a pig for fair or whatever, they put on three or four pounds a day. Mm -hmm. I bet you bears. They you must know, be or, doing or some some yeah. type of you know, there's got to be some sort of like mathematical ratio of the pounds they put on a day. But I bet you it's one or two or three or up to four pounds mm -hmm. a day, even depending. It on depends what on the area and you know how the how the weather is and the conditions. You know, obviously, know how much but food they have. They put know. a lot of uh, weight on every day, and we could like we were talking about that yesterday. Those little um, two three year olds that we've seen on the baits here, the difference in in them. F now from like two weeks ago oh, the, the night they've, and day difference. they've grown mm -hmm. they've grown you can tell and um yeah they need to though i mean if you sleep for half the year and that's what you live off like your uh, the energy and and fat that you live off through the winter when you're sleeping that's that's what you need <laughs> so. i'm uh 
I, I'm prepared to den up all the time, really. I Is just it? I just like to just maintain it to where I could, you know, go into a deep sleep. And you I'd also like fine. to sleep a lot. I do like to sleep a lot. I do. I can't help it. I get tired. Well, your, pr- your preferred uh, food source is obviously jalapenos. jalapenos. <laughs> Which, so tell us a story about yesterday in the stand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite thing, obviously, is Juanita's chips with uh, sour cream, salsa, and jalapenos. And uh, I decided it would be a good idea to eat those at lunch yesterday. And <laughs> that is not a daytime activity that you should ever do and then go sit in a tree. My stomach was on fire. I wanted to die last night, and it was not good. I just don't do it ever, ever. That was funny. Oh, it wasn't funny. You were actually cramping at times, I think. <laughs> I cannot believe you were talking about this. What? This is this is uh, raw and uncut. <laughs> it's part Wild. of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was... Mm, yeah, I... Mm, not good. It was... Wild I made and it uncut it. with Christy Titus. Oh, boy. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> we survived the whole ordeal. Yeah, Thankfully. no, it's been it's been a fun uh, experience. So, like for me, like we said, it's the f- it's only my second bow hunt yeah. that I've been on. The turkey hunt was the first one. Yep. Um, I didn't get lucky on that one. I didn't tag out on this bear hunt. Uh, but it's been a new experience for me uh, in terms of um, sitting a bait uh, for a bear with a with a bow. You know, I've I've hunted bears a lot, mainly in uh, British Columbia uh, and in Alaska. But those are all that those have all been spot, spot and stock stalk hunts um, with rifle. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been a new experience and an, a very interesting experience. You know, I mean, I've I've baited other animals before. We you do that with the wild pigs in Sweden. We we hunt them over bait. Um, we've hunted wolves in Canada over bait. Um, so that's not new, but just. The combination of hunting a bear with a bow and sitting over bait has been a new experience. That's been very interesting, you know, and it's been a good time. And I mean, I've seen a lot of bears, so mm-hmm. that's uh, that's the good thing about it. And uh, I've chosen to pass on a few bears that I didn't want to take, and you know, that's also part of hunting. You you, you make your own choice. I mean, I don't have to fill a tag just to fill a tag. It's uh, for me, it's more the the experience and then the, um, the conservation part of it too. You don't want to shoot a bear that's not mature, Mm-mm. just to shoot a bear. Mm-hmm. You wanna, you wanna take the bear out of this population that you think is the one that needs to be taken out because it's mature enough, it's done its thing, um, and you're helping, you're helping the uh, deer and um, elk population obviously taking out the mature ones because the younger ones haven't. Younger bears haven't learned yet to kill fawns and 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 calves. You know, they 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 are still in training for that, so they mainly browsing around, feeding off the ground. But the big mature boars and sows, they they kill a lot of uh, deer and elk, mm-hmm. uh, calves and fawns. So, um, which if you're a deer or elk hunter, you really should take it upon yourself to to make the time to hunt and help manage big predators. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Like I try to kill a bear every year mm-hmm. is weird as I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say I just want to kill a bear, but I feel like there's not enough. There's a lot more deer and elk hunters than yeah. there are bear hunters. And yeah. that balance is really important. Well, so I, pa- I yeah, really try to it. make it a point mm-hmm. to, to take a big predator every yeah. year. Yeah, Everybody, everybody that has the opportunity and the chance to do it. And I mean, it, there's chances and opportunities for everyone to go and, and take a, a spring black bear, you know, because there's many states that have over-the-counter tags. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a fun experience, and it's a good way to contribute to the uh, game management and the conservation side of uh, of wildlife. And um, I think it's, you know, it's a good, it's a, like you said, it's a good way to... Uh, to um, to help the populations of the animal of the ungulate that that you will hunt in the fall, you know. But not only that, spring bear season, like this is chill. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, you know, you can bring the whole family. Mm-hmm. You know, it's warm. Your kids, if you have them, can be running around riding bikes and doing whatever in camp yeah. and and you know, you have a nice family breakfast or lunch and 
go do some sightseeing during yeah. the day, pick mushrooms. That's it's it. chill. It's it's a chill hunt, and, and you know you hunt your afternoons and evenings, and it just makes a really easy pace. They're late nights because mm-hmm. you know obviously your best time. Your best hour is the last hour of daylight. Yeah, so, so, you know, you do have some later nights, but yeah. it's a fun hunt for oh, yeah. everybody, you know, to come. and A lot of times you can com- com- uh, combine it with fishing, Yeah, you know. Well, and, and it's a great hunt for kids, too. Yeah. Um, you know, sitting in a stand, if you don't want to do a tree stand, you know, you can do ground blinds. And, yeah. and you know, kids are old enough to have that attention span that can sit still. Um, it's a great way for kids to mm-hmm. go on a hunt, too, and, and have, you know warm conditions and good yeah. weather and it's fun it is fun and it's it's a, a relatively oh, inic- hold on you have a new friend it's like really it was what crawling was it? It creepy was crawly down um what was i gonna say well it's a relatively inexpensive form of hunting too yeah. you know i mean obviously non-resident tags aren't cheap but <laughs> i mean well but they're cheaper than yeah. a lot of other hunts you know yeah there's someone coming. Yeah. It's the first we've car of the, the day. The first, first people we see all day here coming up, just cruising through. It's Sunday. Yeah, there'll be, there were more people today than, well, yesterday there was more people than we've seen the whole time we've been yeah, here. Yeah. Saturday, you know, people cruising. Mm-hmm. But um, it's. No, that's a helicopter. That's a helicopter. Isn't it? It could be forestry, yeah. Forestry or uh, one of the logging companies. Tell. Yeah, it Sounds is. Sounds like a helicopter. Yeah, it is. I hear it now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, um, no, but I mean, and you even have a wolf tag in, in your pocket too, you know, on the I sun, do. because that's also part of it. If you have an opportunity, which <laughs> is very rare on a on a baited bear hunt that you have a wolf come into the bait, but it could happen. And I've then, had it happen in BC. Yeah, and then if you, I mean, might as well uh help manage the wolf population you know when you can and they're so hard to to hunt anyway and so hard to uh, manage with the the hunting methods we're allowed to to use on them yeah so um you might as well have that and it's uh, it's just a good way to contribute to the to game management i think in general yeah, we're going to yeah. come back for antelope in antelope, August, yeah. and I'll still have the wolf tags. So there you go. <laughs> you never know. I doubt we'll see wolves down where we're antelope hunting, but... Uh, you never know. Like you said, ooh, it's windy today. It is windy today. It's nice, though. It's, it's going to break the 104-degree uh, heat wave that we have. Yeah. No, it's yeah. been fun. It's been a really good time, and i like it yeah now we're on to uh hopefully africa where maybe you can fill fill a a tag (laughs) with your bow yeah yeah it's gonna be exciting it's just it's less than a week away yeah we're gonna be in africa uh with good friends uh and uh, in an awesome area with uh beautiful lodges and beautiful scenery lots of game Mm -hmm. and um it's just be it's just gonna be a really great time. I keep telling people like with all these borders being shut down, and North American hunts in the United States for like elk and mule deer, if you want to go with an outfitter, they've become so costly. Mm-hmm. Africa is such an excellent option because there you can travel there. Number yeah. one, we're going to South Africa. You could travel there. And you can go on an African safari, have a cultural experience unlike anything else. Family friendly, and uh, uh, for the same price as a mule deer or an elk hunt with an outfitter in the U.S. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, and you can shoot numerous species. Yeah. So it's it's an awesome experience, and um, I, I mean, I go to Africa at least once a year, anyway. So I'm used to it. But for you, it's going to be the second time only going to Africa. You were to Nam- you went to Namibia, Namibia a few years back, mm-hmm. and uh, now we're going to South Africa. I mean, and it's for me. Just to go is not the point. It's it's to go and hang out with friends, you know, and have a good time. So it's you and I going, and then uh, we'll have a couple people coming that will be hunting with us, uh, some of my clients. And um, one of them has actually done a shooting class at your house at the range. So Well, they did the – they purchased the SCI Share the Impact donation that I mm. uh, donated for a fundraiser. Saf- Safari Club did a Share the Impact uh 
in response to COVID. So they did a huge fundraiser where all the monies go to struggling guides and outfitters, uh, mostly outfitters, I guess, to yeah. distribute that money to help them kind of stay afloat during this economic downturn thanks to COVID um, and the craziness that that caused. So I donated an experience, a long range shooting experience at my ranch and the gentleman that's going to Africa with us purchased that uh, shooting experience. And, you know, he had such a good time. He, he booked a trip to come to Africa with us mm-hmm. and, and we're going to have just so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And then, uh, you know, for, for you, it's going to be a totally new experience in a way. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I've done it once and this will be my second time, but I'm going to try to bow hunt spot and stock. Um, you're gonna bow hunt uh, kudu. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get a kudu uh, with my bow, but I'm gonna do it from a blind setup, just because I don't feel confident enough yet that I will be able to spot and stalk and then actually pull off a shot with a bow. Well, and you know, who knows? I may end up doing the same thing. I'm I'm gonna try, being the operative word, uh, spot and stalk. So mm. we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, that's no, gonna be fun. Yeah, we'll you'll like it, it there. I mean, I love that place. I've been, I've been there every year since 2006 so now you know that's 15 years in a row yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's it's it's one of my favorite places in the limpopo in south africa and it's you know good friends of mine and that's the main thing we always have such a good time and mm-hmm. the food's amazing and it's just the atmosphere is just great and um yeah so it's it's going to be awesome and um from there we're going to sweden yeah it's going to yeah. be a busy month. Straight to Sweden. And then uh, we'll do some more robot uh, scouting, hang out with my family. Pig Those hunting. Pig hunting, go boating, fishing. Mm-hmm. Eat some good food. Again, a total, totally different culture and, uh, you know, uh, cuisine and all that stuff. So it's, yeah. We're trying to travel as much as we can internationally still, even though uh, a lot of the countries are restricted and stuff. But this, uh, it's going to be a really good month. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. We appreciate you guys joining us today from Idaho's backcountry, yep. public lands, enjoying our uh, our opportunity that we're given as Americans. We're very blessed and privileged to have the opportunity to hunt places like this oh, and, yeah. and have people that, you know, from from near and far, you know, be able to come and experience this stuff with us. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this hunt recap and kind of behind the scenes on mm-hmm. what went down. And we'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Sounds good. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.